Hey guys, Coulter here with YoMega.com and the Yo-Yo Show. Today I'm going to talk about doctoring bearings. And what do I mean by doctoring? I'm actually talking about making them perform as best as they can. Now right now, we have currently moved out of the roller bearing phase, so we're not going to talk about roller bearings anymore in this series. We're mostly going to talk about ball bearings. Now there is a difference, but regardless, there is a few parts. There is, first of all, an outer race. That's the outside of the bearing where the string will sit on. Then you have the ball, and you have an inner race. You also have a retainer, and that retainer actually links in between the balls and makes sure that they can roll freely, evenly spaced in between. So that way they actually have a little bit of a cage rolling around. And what it can end up happening is you can actually crack a ball. And if you crack a ball, it's not going to roll anymore. It's actually going to want to bounce up and down. And that's when bearings get really noisy or they start chattering or barking. I've seen a lot of that from a lot of people that I would not see that from. They say, oh, just replace the bearing. You can. Or you can take care of it and make it last longer and not have to spend 15, 20, however much money you want to spend on a bearing. And that can save you a lot of time and money. So really people think, another misconception right now, is they think lubricant just makes it smoother and lubricates everything. Really it doesn't. What it ends up doing is it fills in the crack and it fills in the missing spaces. So what can end up happening if you use too much is you can actually flood the bearing. You can actually fill all on the inside or on the outside. You can fill all of that in and it won't run smoothly anymore. When people say, oh, I added too much lube and I ruined my bearing so it's responsive now. That's not true. They just added so much lubricant that now the bearing is swimming in itself. It can't handle it. Really, all they needed was just enough to fill in that little crack. That's all it needed. And it'll run a billion times smoother and last so much longer. And it'll be quieter. There are a bajillion, absolutely ton, of specialty made yo-yo lubricants. And there are a bunch of different ideas and theories. Um, there are four lubricants I'm really liking. One of them is made by One Drop. Another one is the Yomega Brain Lube. I love this stuff because it's safe on plastic yo-yos too. So is graphite powder. One other that I really like is made by Monkey Finger, but I couldn't find it to show you guys. Sorry about that, but I'm going to show you guys how to use each of these real, really quick. But that'll be just about it. Starting off with the One Drop Yo-Yo's Lubricant, and I'm going to use this on a Raider bearing. No, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to use this on a Diffio Concave bearing. That's what I'm going to use this on. I don't u usually lubricate these bearings, but in this case, I'm going to. We'll say this one has a crack or an imbalance in the retainer or something like that. No, you can see that there's already a drop formed, and that's it. Boom. Done. One of the most amazing and easy applicators ever. One drop is all it takes. Now on these two Raider bearings, I'm going to show you guys how to apply your Mega Brain Lube. Uh, the Brain Lube can work on plastic transaxles as well, but that's a little bit different process. It's actually even easier to understand than this. Um, and really, this stuff, you can watch it travel down the tube. And you just watch it right until you get a little drop. You can put one or two drops on there if you like. I'm going to put two in this case. I do actually want to flood these bearings because I'm trying to make these ones as responsive as possible. Now, I would use just the little bit that's on the tip for a string trick bearing 
because this stuff is much thicker, but it also lasts a lot longer, and I found it can actually condition the bearing and even reset a retainer to where it's perfect. I love this stuff so much. So, so much. It's a little bit tricky and takes some time to master, but it is so worth it if you do. Now, this is a older Uchio bearing that I have. It's got 10 balls. So one of these balls has a big old crack in it. And you can actually hear it, hopefully. You can hear it, and you can feel it. The bearing itself is vibrating. And I, what I'm going to do is, what graphite is, is it's actually a very soft metal. It's almost like, uh, it's almost like lead, but it's not quite like lead. Uh, they find it, it's the same stuff that's in, uh, that's in pencils. And this stuff is a very fine, fine powder. You can see it comes out very dark, and there's actually quite a bit of it there. I'd use le just about half of that in a bearing, and then I'd run it, so that way it actually gets stuck inside the crack, and then it'll smooth out as it runs. It'll take a little bit to wear in, and then it'll become perfectly round again. So this is actually a way to repair a bearing more than a lubricate it, but it will also lubricate all the other pieces. Now one other thing you'd note is it's very difficult to do this if you have your shields in. It's possible, it's just really, really painful. So much extra work. So what I'm going to do is I am being very careful and I'm looking down in the gap And that's all it's going to take. There. Hear how it's starting to get better? And better. It's basically repaired already. This has been Coulter with the Yo-Yo Show. I am going to basically leave you guys here. As always, keep spinning strong. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the box below. We will always try to get back to you as promptly as possible. This has been Coulter with the Omega and the Yo-Yo Show. As always, keep spinning strong, and I'll see you guys next time.